Vikings Valhalla, Netflix's sequel series to History's Vikings, is a sturdy, exciting follow-up, though not one without a few tonal disparities. It's more straightforward than Vikings was, more interested in the broader beats of the story than the poetic and spiritual ruminations of the original series. That's not inherently a bad thing, though, just different. You have been summoned here to avenge the death of Vikings. The long and lauded run of Vikings on History was created and solely written by Michael Hurst. Yep, all 89 episodes. It had a rather singular vision and voice. Valhalla, on the other hand, has been cranked out through much more of a traditional production model. While Hearst is credited as a co-creator and executive producer, none of the episodes are written by him. Jeb Stewart is the showrunner here, penning the first two episodes and presiding over a traditional writer's room for the rest. The series is reliable and sometimes thrilling, but from the opening credits alone, Valhalla feels worlds apart from its predecessor. There's nothing here that will be off-putting for fans, though. It doesn't feel the same, but, as an unexpected safety net, the slight switch in tone is almost baked into the story, which is set 100 years after the original. The Vikings world itself is very different now, so accidentally on purpose, Valhalla can present things in a new light because the old Norse ways are dying. The end result is a series that presents as a well-executed axes and arrows adventure with gritty performances, big battle sequences, and dramatic twists. The downside is that it lacks the original's ethereal specialness and that show's haunting dance with what lies beyond the veil. Sam Corlett is the centerpiece of Valhalla, playing the famed Leif Erikson. Due to a new, growing Christian faction in this season, many of the characters feel anglicized, with their Scandinavian speech patterns and cadence buried and the sing-songy timber muted. They're more animated and less pensive, though Leif, from far-removed Greenland, still often stews in silent intensity. Corlett makes for a captivating Leif, who must struggle to resist enemies from within and without, Frida Gustafsson also gives a powerful performance as his sister Freydis, infusing her with a noble heart and steadfast stubbornness that helps carry the back half of this season. The unexpected MVP of the middle of the season is Bradley Freeguard's Canute the Great, who really steps up to become an intriguing presence halfway. He represents, perhaps, the end result of Ragnar's drive to be a more progressive and understanding Viking. To juxtapose this, Canute's father, Sven Forkbeard, is rife with old-style viciousness. Of course, this is the type of series that will actually point out these themes through dialogue and not leave them understated. Nothing passes through with subtlety on Valhalla, though it's never so clumsy that it beats you over the head. Sadly, Canute, just as he starts to breathe new life into the story, vanishes from the final episodes. The third central character here, after Greenlanders Leif and Freydis, is Leo Suter's Harald Sigurdsson, the great-grandson of the original show's Harald Feinherr. He's nicely balanced out by Suter, who gets to deliver a hunky wildcard aspect to the series. Harald's lack of prejudice allows him to see the intelligence and skill that lurks beneath Leif's stoic exterior. Vikings Valhalla never skimps on action. There are two marvelous war moments here in Season 1, both spotlighting different strategies, twists, and turns. Osbjorn Crow's pious and psychotic Jarl Kore makes for a formidable seasonal boss, which is something new to the franchise and a further gust in the winds of change. If my people fight to their last breath, they will have earned a seat at Odin's table. Vikings Valhalla is a crafty continuation of Vikings, though lacking in the original series' spiritual and structural opaqueness, which was an element that made the old show stand apart from other historical dramas. Valhalla is more pointed and purposeful, unraveling events in a more conventional manner, though that doesn't mean it isn't compelling or complete. It presents a much different time for Vikings, so it stands to reason it should tonally change course as well. For more Netflix series, check out what we thought of The Cuphead Show and All of Us Are Dead. And for everything else, stick with IGN. You are here!